Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. In the classroom, chalkboards and notebooks are increasingly giving way to PCs and tablets, even in developing countries. But how early do children need to start using IT? What if a child wants to become a robotics engineer? This week on Learning World, we look at how education is adapting to the latest technology in order to prepare students for the world of work. In some parts of Kenya, education is still very basic and dropout rates are high. But one project has found that investing in tablets and apps can be one way to re-engage students in their lessons. So they've started introducing them to schools. Let's see how this has affected students' attendance and performance. Ilimu is the Swahili word for education and it's also the name of an app for school children. It was invented by a group of software developers who wanted to bring high-tech learning to one of Kenya's poorest communities. This app's supposed to grab students' attention and encourage them to learn. In Kenya, almost half of school students drop out at the age of 14 with a very basic education. But Nivi Mukherjee, the founder behind this pilot project, says that if learning is made more interactive and engaging, it might motivate children to stay longer in school. Now, instead of just boring textbooks, we add animations and games and songs and videos and quizzes, and we make the entire learning process really fun and interactive and engaging for children. The pilot project was launched in Kawangware, one of the poorest parts of Nairobi, which is notorious for drugs, prostitution and crime. Most of the students here are lucky to be in school at all. 13-year-old Marceline Kianda is preparing to sit for her final primary exams. She says that apps are more exciting and easier to understand than reading textbooks. Now instead of teachers coming with a lot of textbooks, they just come with tablets. When you have a question, instead of going, when the teacher is not around, instead of going and ask, you just click in the tablet and you get the, the question which you have, you have asked. There are many reasons why Kenyan students drop out of school early. The country's education system needs 80,000 more teachers at the moment, and students are crammed into tiny classrooms, all competing for the attention of one teacher. Many students have short attention spans. Ilimu hopes that by using interactive apps, children's ability to concentrate will improve. The tablets have made our pupils to get the courage and confidence to come to school, and that one has enhanced our, the, the, the performance and the attendance of the, the total marks of the peoples as, as an education as a whole, they have made the peoples to score a lot of marks. Nivi Mukherjee says that the app has a wider relevance for society as a whole, and not only to improve the school curriculum and the desire to learn. We want to teach children to grow up and be active participants of the 21st century economy. We want them to be better leaders, to be smarter voters. Um, and hopefully in the future we'd like to see the uh, children all over Africa and maybe around the world using these with this kind of device. Mukherjee hopes that this new app will revolutionize learning in Africa and bridge the gap between the continent and other countries' standards. So clearly technology has an important place in education. But how early do children have to start in order to learn programming? In Estonia, it's very young indeed. The government has recently launched a nationwide code writing scheme aiming to encourage a whole new generation to get smart when it comes to using technology. In this report, we find out more about the program and why it matters. Estonia's Tiger Leap Foundations launched a program introducing IT science and computer programming at schools from the first grade. Since the beginning of the new school year, the program has been used in many state-funded schools in Estonia. Its designers point out that internet and modern technologies have become an integral part of daily life. Our children start to become interested in smartphones and tablets very early on. Our use of technology has to be mirrored at school and it can't be absent from primary school. That's why the involvement of primary schools is justified. In some Estonian schools, the experimental IT science program for first graders was introduced several years ago, with good results. This year, the decision has been made to introduce it across the country. 
Estonia needs a lot of qualified IT specialists. The demand in companies is so high, they struggle to fill vacancies. We don't have the utopian goal that will fill all Estonia's companies with programmers. The goal of the Tiger Leap program is to give students a chance to get to know the computer from a totally different side, to not be a player but the creator of a game. The user of software becomes the creator of software. During the first lessons, the most difficult task the teachers face is to explain to children that the computer is not just a playground and to teach mouse and keyboard skills. At the end of the school year, the children will know how to make animations, create simple apps and other computer programs. In the first and second grades, we're trying to teach them to work well with their hands, drawing and knowing how to use a keyboard. That's the basics and, of course, safe logins and logouts. But in the third and fourth grades, we try to deal with more complicated tasks like research and basic programming. Estonia has a highly developed online culture that includes online voting, access to electronic medical records and some of the loosest content restrictions in the world. So age is clearly no barrier to understanding technology. Even building robotic machines is a passion for many Japanese kids. In this report we meet a Japanese professor who is famous for his robotic inventions and who strongly believes that robotics should be taught at a very young age. We hear from him and his engineering students. Children at elementary schools have a fascination with the world of mechanical operations and a curiosity about how computers set things in motion. It's the magic of robotics, a discipline that might encourage children to take an interest in maths, science and technology. They usually start building them at a very young age and then dream about a future working as engineers and perhaps being as good as the master of robotics, Professor Shigeo Hirose. If you want to create a robot, it's very important to think like an engineer. From a very early age, you have to be able to combine the use of your brain and also the sense of touch with your own hands. That's how I think future engineers will be able to create useful robots for society. Robots that can support humans in performing dangerous tasks, like his most famous creation, the snake robot. It's very useful in rescue operations due to its flexibility and ability to explore tight spaces. Thanks to this prototype, some engineers call him the snake charmer. His students, almost 30 young engineers from different countries, have worked hard to be part of this robotics lab. We need a whole week to reach a certain conclusion, while Professor Hirose needs a day or maybe three minutes. But as the professor says, the truly important aspect is the act of thinking. Many students dream of building humanoids when they first come to Tokyo, but as soon as they arrive, Professor Hirose convinces them that other non-human shapes are more practical and useful. Hirose is, for instance, also involved in work with the United Nations to develop a remotely controlled robot capable of clearing landmines. The ones who come to our lab are the ones who like to create things, those who as a child made models, who had interest in creating things and participated in contests. These are things that you don't learn in school, but that once you get in here are the most useful. This new generation of young Japanese engineers is not just creating their own new prototypes, but also keeping Professor Hirose's legacy alive. It's the magic of robotics. And now some feedback. Some of our social media friends are in favor of using technologies in education because they say it breaks down cultural and language barriers between students. That's it for now. Goodbye from all the team. Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.